A Mysterious Disease, The Outlook, March 2nd, 1921. There is more mystery than cause for alarm in the so-called sleeping sickness, or encephalitis lethargica, as the doctors call it. It is true that there have been some scores of cases of this disease, or at least cases which were so classified locally, during the winter. In New York City, for instance, the health department registered 187 cases and 48 deaths between January 1st and February 15th. Elsewhere, both in the East and the Middle West, a comparatively few cases have been reported here and there. There has been nothing, however, that can be called an epidemic, and physicians generally do not seem to anticipate an epidemic. Dr. Sharachewski, Assistant Surgeon General of the Federal Public Health Service, is reported as saying that the danger of having sleeping sickness and dying of it is only about 1 in 100 as compared with pneumonia, and it is far less communicable than pneumonia, so that there is really no cause for general alarm. What is known positively about the disease is that it appears only in the colder months of the year, and that it has nothing whatever to do with the tropical disease called sleeping sickness, which is propagated by the bite of the South African tsetse fly. Dr. Simon Flexner, who is an authority on the disease, has stated in a printed paper that the sleeping sickness in this country can be traced indirectly to an epidemic in Vienna five years ago. For some time, physicians were inclined to ascribe the cause of the disease to that form of food poisoning known as botulism. This theory has now been discarded. Dr. Flexner believes that the cause is quite independent of diet, and that it is probably of a microbic origin and of a communicable nature. Other authorities agree in this and declare that it is a nose and throat disease, naturally therefore appearing in winter. It is not contagious in the ordinary sense, as is shown by the fact that it is a very rare thing indeed for more than one case to occur in one family. The precautions recommended are those which are generally applicable to careful health preservation in wintertime, such as being in the open air a good deal, keeping away so far as possible from persons with colds, dressing warmly, and avoiding crowds and bad ventilation. The disease derives its common name from the fact that the person affected falls into a condition of drowsiness, and sometimes remains asleep or in a semi-comatose condition for days at a time, falling asleep sometimes in the midst of his work or even at mealtimes. It must always be remembered that where mystery and peculiar conditions like those of this sickness exist, there is a great tendency to exaggerate its extent. Unless present indications and the opinion of the medical authorities are entirely mistaken, it is extremely improbable that there will be a dangerous and destructive epidemic.